Hello folks, my name is Zero22, and today we're going to be playing some Romance of the Thirteen Kingdoms. This is kind of my first video and I'm kind of nervous, so if I stumble over my words or something like that, I apologize in advance. <laughs> but, as a kid, I kind of always really enjoyed the Dynasty Warriors and Romance of the Kingdoms series. Dynasty Warriors was kind of the first game I ever played on a console. I played it on the PlayStation 2. I played Dynasty Warriors Empires 5. But this is kind of like more of the official, in a sense of way, of the story and like how things go and all that. But I was going to try to see about playing as a character who wasn't too overpowered and just kind of see if we can either raise him up or give him a different story. You know, because a lot of these main characters are kind of set in stone and they're really strong and kind of overpower everybody. Three Kingdoms is more of like a, a kind of like a between three kingdoms called Wu, Shu, and, and Wei. And Wei is led by Cao Cao. And Shu is led by Liu Bei, and at the time Wu is led by Sun Jian, but his kids start taking over after a sense of time, uh, after a series of uh, events. But they're kind of the three main kingdoms, and they're really strong and stuff like that, and they have some really, really good officers. I'm part of a Facebook group where I was going to kind of want to do some role playing and stuff like that as far as stuff like this so kind of going to be posting and, and that and uh, let's get into it so the three kingdoms is kind of an era in time in China where a lot of different warlords were fighting for power and trying to you know, rule the kingdom in their own views, whether it be for personal gain, whether it be for for fame, for, you know, just the sake of maybe even freeing the people and having a sense of peace and doing it for their sense of justice. But yeah. So I was going to play in the scenario A Gathering of Heroes. As you can see, it says fictional. All these other ones are kind of like historical and stuff like that, but I like doing this one, it's kind of my favorite, I don't know why, but it kind of feels like a free-for-all, like a free-for-all of all the characters and anyone can kind of come out on top. But these other ones you can kind of see like, for example, the blue in this, which is Wei, which is Cao Cao, he kind of already is more established, you know, like he kind of already has most of the kingdom, you know, in his control. But I like playing as this one because it's like a free-for-all and anyone kind of gets a chance. Anyone can have a piece of the pie, you know? But I was going to play as a uh, Hugh Fan, but keep in mind, you know, I'm probably going to butcher these names, but I'm just a nerd for this series. Like, I really do enjoy these games a lot. But I was going to play as Hugh Fan and see how his life turns out. He kind of starts off already in a town called Ending that's already unoccupied. But I was going to see, you know, see who conquers it and see if they want to offer me a job and, you know, see how this just turns out. So let's go ahead and find him. As you can see, there's a ton of characters. That's what I love about this game. There's just so, so many characters and like I said, anyone can kind of have a chance. So this is the character we're going to be playing as, Hugh Finn. And I'm not going to probably bump it up. I don't know. I might keep it like this. But I'm, this is more of just like kind of like a chill game through uh, gameplay. And just kind of seeing how this goes. I'm going to keep everything else standard. So like, he, like I said, he's going to start over there. As you can see, his stats are not too great. For years upon years, in the later Han Dynasty, warriors were driven by passion, fought and killed to further their own cause. 
Were they driven by faith? There's uh, the yellow turban up in there in the corner, Zheng Zhao, and then down here is uh, the guy in the bottom left is Zheng Lu. Was it purely for greed? And then um, up in the top left corner is Duang Zhao, kind of more of a tyrant, kind of more of a guy who only cares about himself. And in the bottom right corner is Lu Bu, who, if any of you guys know about the series, is a very strong character, if not the strongest character. He's very overpowered and, you know, probably the strongest character in the entire game. But the whole fact is, is he, He's a, uh, yeah, he's a character, right? He's kind of like a, you can't command him. You, he's a wild card. Did they fight for honor? And then the bottom left corner is Yuan Shao, who's kind of regarded as the false emperor. He kind of thinks he's hot stuff and all that. And then Yuan Shao up there in the top right corner, he's, he's kind of like, more of a like a, a nobleman kind of like very prideful character indeed did they aspire for something greater this is the Wu kingdom that I mentioned before on the top is Sun Jian who was a leader at the time and the bottom left was his eldest son Sun Se also known as the little conqueror who kind of takes after his father a little bit after his father as incidents happen to him and the other one with the long beautiful beard it's Sun Quan, who kind of takes off after Sun Se, after events happened to him as well. Was it their vast ambitions? This is Cao Cao, the guy who is the leader of the Wei Kingdom. I also mentioned him before, but he's he has some really good officers. He's really dangerous. <laughs> He's kind of the guy who was closer to conquering all the kingdom, I think, in my personal opinion. Were they a champion of justice? And this is Leo Bei, who's the, in charge of the Shu kingdom. But he kind of has more of a sense of the people and cares for the people. And he also has really strong officers as well. But those three, the Wu, Shu, and Wei, they have, they're really, really strong. And like for the most part in this game, they kind of dominate. And then with all these other different ones that pop in as well, all these other characters. These heroes transcended fate and time to face off in an epic conflict. So we have this guy kind of just, you know, tells you some things about like, you know, you can raise your own flag and make your own force, or you can for somebody else I don't know if I want to raise my own flag but I probably work for somebody and uh, things you can do in this yeah, game is kind of like know. develop bonds with different people and like they can help you and like training yourself or they can help you and like gaining land if you decide maybe you do want to raise your own flag but for me like I said for now I probably just stay here and maybe work for somebody so you start in this area right here and as I mentioned before it's kind of already unoccupied so what I do is I'm gonna sit here and see if someone offers me a job so in the meantime I'll probably invest investigate see what's around see if I can find another officer see if I can get some money or something But I'm really excited to, to do this and just to kind of see how it plays out. Like, I did watch some other YouTubers play stuff like this, uh, Mysterious JG and uh, NG Paradox. Like, there were two guys that I to watch, but there's only so much you can post. Like, I, I watched a lot of them, but kind of been, got inspired from them. So, we didn't find anything. That's not good. Let's try it again. Let's see what happens. Kind of just biding time. See if someone comes and takes this, this city over. See if uh, another kingdom offers us a job.
Do you guys also have any tips or anything that you'd like to discuss about the game or about the history? Like, totally interested in hearing about that. Any knowledge I can gain about this series is always helpful. So, Simayi of the Simayi army has arrived. Shall I let him in? Please meet you. I am Semayi of Cheng, Cheng Gang. Cheng Gang. It is nice to put a face in all the rumors I've heard about you. What have you come for? Will you serve Semayi and lend us your strength? So here we have a guy already offering us a job to come work for them. Semayi. He's a, in history, he's a really good strategist. I've been waiting to hear that. I will be delighted to join you. You have made the right decision. Now let us return to Chang, Chang Gang. <laughs> Yu Fen has been hired after being persuaded by Sima Yi at ending. So like I said, I'm sorry if I butcher these names. I really am. <laughs> hey, look, I found some money before, before I'm going back to this work for this guy. So... You can kind of see all the officers that kind of already work for him. Has a very big family. <laughs> a lot of semi. So this is him. You can see his intelligence is high up there, 98. So basically he can talk to anybody about anything and probably have his way, honestly. This is my character here. As you can see, his stats are not, not that great compared to maybe someone of his stature of Simai, but like I said, it's all about the character development and like making a character who maybe history wasn't so kind on, maybe shedding some light on him, seeing if he can do something. And also I like to turn on this force territory display, it kind of like makes a, the map look a, more, a little more lively, you know, see some different shades of colors here representing all the different warlords and stuff like that in different kingdoms. So let's go over here. Go to the Semai where he hired us. I really like Lu Bu. I think he's probably one of my favorite characters because I was a mission really strong and overpowered and like you know if he wasn't so arrogant and thinking that he was the best and everything and so unloyal and such a wild card I feel like he could have done really well like I said he was just driven on brute strength and wanting to show his show his strength off to the rest of the China so let's see so we have different a lot of options here you know we can visit an officer but we probably have to meet them first. You know, you can buy some specialties here. I like to buy the the, the wine or the tea, just just in case I want to maybe meet a. Certain, so they give you an option of meeting a cer certain officer. So like you can come down here and you can go to a banquet, and then see you can use that liquor and like say you had a mission where you had to hire a certain person, but you hadn't met them yet. So that would give you the opportunity to, you know, meet them and also maybe some other characters to get you the chance to be able to, to talk to them and try to persuade them into working for either you or your king or your warlord. So I'm going to go here to the, to the capital or to the, to the temple and see what kind of missions I can do. So like you can hire people, investigate, you can you know, train your guys' troops, and, you know, raise farming and culture of the city you're currently residing in. So I, and if you can see on to the right side, it tells you, you know, everything you need to know about, you know, the city. Like prosperity, you can see currently is low. The gold is how much money we have. We got the revenue, the supplies, the harvest. And then the, and the three bottom right there, the commerce, farming and culture. If you raise those up, you can help boost up your city. And you know, you can boost it from, you know, from low to medium and you can gain more money and, and 
overall it's just a good thing to have. So right now it looks like we can't really do anything. So maybe we should, you know, should go talk to somebody, see if we can, you know, build build some relationships. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this tea. See, as I mentioned, uh, since I use the T, I can select any of these characters, and then I can I can meet them, you know. So we already know Simai Yi since he came to us and, and greeted us and offered us a job. So we're not going to probably use it on him. And a lot of these characters in this kingdom, particularly the Simai Yi's clan, like. They're very, very smart and intelligent, so boost our, our intelligence ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and meet Sima, Sima Lang. My name is Sima Lang, and it's an honor to finally meet you. I am always glad to see you. Thank you for the invitation. See how he didn't in introduce himself? Because we already knew him, we were already familiar with, for, with him. I am Wu Gang of Chang Gang, and it's a pleasure to meet you. I am Zhang Bang. Zhang Bang, sorry, of Chang Gang. It is a pleasure to meet you. I am honored to meet you. I am Du Yu. I am Jiao Kong of Chang Gang. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Wang Yanji, pretty sure. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. It is an honor to finally meet you. I am Semai Zhao of Cheng Yang. It is a pleasure to meet you. I am honored to meet you. I am Yang Hu. Greetings, I am Semai Fu. What a lovely banquet this is. Greetings, I am Semai Shi. What a lovely banquet this is. I am Semai Zhao from Cheng Gang. <laughs> a lot of Semais, semi, like I said. Let this be a wonderful night. Thank you for coming. Please feast and enjoy. So I raised their rapport with them. So now they kind of all like me a little bit, or they all at least know me. So like now I can go and visit them. And based on how big their bubble is, is their presence, which you can see in the stats to the right. So the bigger the presence is, like the more like well throughout the line the character is. So like for example, like I I met Semi Lang, so if I talk to him, see like I know I know him. Like even though I can't really do anything with him right now because we don't have that much of a of a friendship with each other. So like all I can do is back out. But on the other hand, like, see, I had to meet this guy, Xiao Z. Oh, wait. Oh, I guess, I guess if you have a pretty good presence, you can meet them. But normally, normally, if you don't, if you don't do that, then uh, there will be a, a child that will say, I'm sorry, this person doesn't even know you. Like that meme, like, who even are you? <laughs> yeah. So we're kind of just hanging out, you know. Oh, look, we can finally do some missions. So, like, see, you can do different missions and stuff like this, like hire some people. So right here, like it says in the bottom, acquainted. Like, see, I know this person. I know this person. And to see the X, that means I don't know them. So if I was told to go hire Yang Song, but I didn't know him, it would be difficult because I wouldn't be able to talk to him. So yeah, so that's why you kind of want to, you know, maybe keep a, a wine on you just in case so you, you can kind of have a better chance of meeting a character that you actually, you know, are looking for or wanting to talk to. So when it says dispatch, that means other officers are already on the, on the mission and that they're already trying to do this. So people are already trying to hire these characters. 
So when if I click this, maybe we should just wait for now, that's what it says. That means I probably don't have a really good chance of, of persuading that character to work for us. But like Wu Gang, for example, like if I clicked him, it says recommended. I could probably do it, but it probably won't work, but I have a really good chance of getting this guy to work for us. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if we can get him to come work for us. The more talent we have, the better. Now is our chance to hire Wu Gang. Very well, I trust what you say. So like if you do things for your Lord, he will generally like you and build more of a rapport with you. And then that can help you, you know, gain higher ranks. So like you can tell him, hey, you know, there's a city over here that no one's, you know, currently at. Let's go to or, you know, like, hey, this guy over here really kicks butt. Maybe we should, you know, form an alliance with him so he doesn't kick our butt. Just stuff like that, you know. So it's good to be in favor of your Lord. So we're going to go ahead and try to hire Wu Gang, as I mentioned before. There he is. So the icon is popped up saying we can hire him. Let's see what he says. Will you serve Seven Yi and lend us your strength? I see. So this means he isn't sure if he wants to. So the outcome can be he can say, no, no way, I'm not working for you. Or he can, be, or he can say, let's have a duel that you can do it. And then if you win, then he'll join you. Or he can say, huh, maybe let's see your reasoning behind it. And you can do like a, you know, an, an intellectual, intellectual battle, excuse me, and see maybe if you can persuade him that way. Why do you falter? Some of you's army has heaven's blessing. So currently we're gonna see if we can persuade him to work for us. I'm gonna try to see if I can keep these videos around 30 minutes, or around 30 minutes. Maybe even less, a little less than 30 minutes. Huo Zhang of Duang Zhao's army has arrived. Shall I let them in? So this guy, I feel like he's probably gonna try to convince me to come work for them. But I probably won't because I wanna try to see if I can be more of a loyal officer. Pleased to meet you. I am Huo Zhang of Tai Tian Shu, I think. Tuan Shi, I think. No, Tuan Shi, I'm pretty sure. I've heard much about you. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. What can I do for you today? <laughs> Will you serve Duang Zhao and let us your strength? Um, heck no. Because like I said, I was going to be loyal. I will pretend I didn't hear that. Very well, but I shall return another day. So yeah, I'm going to try to stick with my lord for the most part. If he gets his, his butt kicked by another kingdom, then if another kingdom wants to hire me, then yeah. But... We're gonna just kind of see how this plays out. Hu Fian is not gonna be disloyal. I want to be the the general who swaps sides a thousand times. Zheng Bei has been hired after being persuaded by Sima Zhao at Cheng Gate. So yeah, that guy got him to join us. Yeah, I've made my decision. I am sorry, but you have not thoroughly convinced me. I shall withdraw for today, but I have not given up. So yeah, we didn't get him, unfortunately. So that means now I'm going to tell my lord that I sucked and I couldn't get it done. He's not going to be happy. I regret to say that the task ended in failure. Hmm, I thought you might have done better. So yeah, see, the merit has went from zero to zero plus. So yeah, we didn't get anything out of that. Another little cool thing you can do is when these little exclamation marks pop up is you can help these different generals and they'll be thankful for you and they can help you if you're trying to do something. Like if you're trying to improve the farming, you can probably ask them to help you and they might. Or like if they're grateful or thankful to you, they might help you, you know, be, you know, mentor you. Say like how my character wasn't so, you know, intelligent. If he's really intelligent, the guy I'm helping, he can mentor me and help me boost up that stat. So I'm gonna go ahead and help this guy, you know. Sorry to bother you, maybe I could help you out. No need to ask, I'll gladly welcome your help. So yeah, when you when you get the help of other generals, you also shorten the time. So it would've took him 10 days to do that, but by us helping him, it's only gonna take five days from now. 
So that frees him up, you know, a little bit sooner so maybe he can do something else. You know, save him some time. <laughs> so we didn't have any luck hiring that guy, but he was hired by somebody buddy else, thankfully. It would have been cool to be able to gain some uh, merit, some renown for it. Through farming, report with do, do you and Sima she has gone up. So I guess there is another guy helping him out as well. I cannot thank you enough. I will repay you, you know that. See, now he is grateful towards us. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. Hopefully I can help more often. So um, generally they'll have this little pulsing outwards and then you know you can click them. See if I talk to him compared to when I talked to that other guy and nothing really happened, but now if I talk to him tell you about the street performer I saw the other day. <laughs> and then he'll laugh because that's what they do, they laugh. <laughs> I feel like I understand you much more. So yeah, see, my report went, went up with him. See, also it says he can mentor me. Like, this is a good way of helping improve your character if he isn't so strong. So as you can see, my stats compared to his, he's, he's a much better character except for he's not really, you know, a, a general who you'd send out typically to fight your battles for you see like if I was gonna have him teach me war like that would be like only a plus five but like if I wanted him to teach me leadership or you know intelligence or governing like see like the difference and how much is being gained from that so yeah so if you're better than a character at something then you don't want them to mentor you in that because you <laughs> You're already better than I'm at that. I can't teach you much more. So I'm going to have him teach me intelligence. Could you, could you share with me your wealth of knowledge? Of course. I have much yet to learn, but I will pass some of my knowledge. And that right there is my timer to kind of keep me on track to make sure that I'm not running too long on these videos, but thanks for watching and my name is once again is 022 and this is my first time doing this and I'm really excited to see where I get with that. If you guys would like to see more or have any tips or anything, please let me know. Alright, thank you and take care. Bye.